Have you ever listened to the show before? Um, actually, just today. Hi and welcome to The Curling Show, the podcast that brings you interviews with the sports top athletes and the people who shape the game. Brought to you by fit to curl a sports-specific guide to training for the world's greatest game by John Morris, with me, Dean Gemmel. Pick up a copy of fit to curl at fittocurl.com, learn more about what makes a successful curler and team from John, and then follow the programs in the book. You'll not only feel better on the ice, but you should be able to make a wider range of shots and sweep more effectively. No matter what kind of curler you are or what your current fitness level may be, there's a program for you in this book. Find out more at fittocurl.com. The skip of the team that came out of nowhere to win the 2010 Alberta Scotties title, Valerie Sweeting, welcome to The Curling Show. Hi, thanks for having me. No problem. You and your team, third Megan Einerson, second Whitney Moore and lead Lindsay Makachuk, just recorded what Al Cameron of the Calgary Herald called the biggest upset since Gloria Polinka won the Alberta title in 1994. Who's more surprised, you and your team or other curlers in Alberta? Um, I'd say it's probably an equal level amongst everybody. <laughs> so you guys were fairly shocked. Um, you know, we the girls were playing great, and we just kind of got rallying in the C event there and went through the playoffs, and we realized that we we can make the shots to win, and we were, it was obviously a shock, but I think everyone else is, I'd say everyone else is more shocked than we are. You know, on your way to Palinking, the favorites, uh, you came out of the C, but then you beat uh, really the two favorites in the field, Kathy King and the Sammies, and Shannon Clybrink in the final. Um, you know, were there moments in those games when you, you just, you know, you, you had doubts or were you, were you just, did it just grow the whole time? I mean, you won in the 11th end on a run back, so it was never really easy. No, it definitely wasn't easy, and we didn't have an easy trip there either. I mean, it's not like we kind of got the easier side of the draw either. We had to play, you know, Grand Prairie's Renee Sonnenberg and Crystal Webster and Leslie Rogers and King twice, and so it's not like we just got an easy trip there and then got hot on Sunday, but uh, no, uh, moments in that game, I think the triple against King in the semifinal really turned things around. Uh, Caitlin Laws made two pistol runbacks in that end to set it up for them, but unfortunately, Cassie's last, or her first one, sorry, went a little bit deep and set that up, and it was just a great team shot. The girls swept it, and it, I think that's really where the momentum changed in that game. Hey, we know you're young. You're just 22, I gather, but uh, fill us in a bit because, honestly, uh, you know, I can't even find much on your junior career. So were you one of these good Alberta juniors who just ran into other very good Alberta juniors all the time? <laughs> uh, yeah, I well, I'm actually originally from Saskatchewan, and we my family moved to Alberta when I was about 13, and kind of went through juniors there. Um, I was on the 2004 Alberta Junior or Juvenile team. And uh, then after I graduated, I went back to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and my team won the 2007 Juniors there. So uh, never won Junior Provincials in Alberta, but I am quite familiar amongst the other people my age. So I, I should know more about you, see? I haven't done enough research. But, uh, <laughs> um, it looks as though you also had a lineup change during the season. When did that happen? Um, yeah, we originally started out the season with uh, Whitney playing lead, and we had Carly Quigley playing second for us. But unfortunately, due to work commitments, we had to make a little change up there. Um, it's not something we wanted to do, but obviously... We're not at that level where we can give up our jobs to curl. So we uh, had to do what was best for the team. And unfortunately, Carly couldn't play with us anymore because of work. So how much is she hating her job right now? <laughs> I don't know. I actually haven't talked to her yet. So I'll bet you haven't. <laughs> she's probably hating it. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, have you thought about the fact, you know, you've had a couple of days here now to uh, decompress a bit. You tell me that uh, when I called here, you were actually sitting down to watch the final for the first time and hear the commentary. Uh, in, the, in the brief 48 hours or so, I guess, have you thought about the fact that sometimes for teams that, that come out of nowhere to win a provincial title, uh, that week at the Scotties that should be the highlight of a curling career becomes, you know, one of the absolute worst. Have you thought about how to deal with that and how to avoid that? Um, I think if we just take our the same game plan we had in provincials into the Scotties, I think that we will do well. Um, obviously, we don't want to go 0 and 11, but <laughs> um, well, I didn't say that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, no, it's. I don't think, like, we're not afraid of not performing well there. We're really happy to be representing the province. Uh, I think it's safe to say that Alberta is one of the toughest provinces to come out of for men's and women's, and it's it's an honor to be representing Alberta, and we're just going to take it as it comes, and we should do well there. Honestly, I think the key for you is to remember to enjoy yourselves. Uh, you see so many teams like yours that, that go there and they feel the heat and uh, it turns into a long week. Yeah, um, I think we're I, and we're kind of at a disadvantage too because we don't have a lot of time to prepare for it with everything bumped up because of the Olympics. But um, yeah, we've, we'll definitely take it all in and experience all of it. It'll be a really good experience. So, so if I if I look on the World Curling Tour side and the Ashen World Curling Tour side, I see you guys uh, won like uh, twenty five hundred bucks in Red Deer, five hundred bucks at the Boundary Ford Classic in Lloyd. Um, so really, not a great year. But but were were there bright spots that that you guys thought you were having that others just missed? Um. Yeah. We we played on the World Curling Tour there, and we did the Alberta Curling Tour events. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't make it out of the province, but we we did have some highlights over the year. Um, we qualified in Red Deer, which I think is the toughest Alberta tour event, and it was felt great for us to qualify along alongside Clybrink and Jones and the other top teams. And in the Boundary Ford, we beat you know last year Scotty's runner-up Marla Mallet, and those were highlights for us. So. We did have experience playing top teams throughout the season, and it meant a lot when we could keep up with them. There's probably a lesson in there. Find find things to build on all year. I mean, a couple wins here and there it can can make you feel better about yourselves. Yeah, for sure. Uh, have you ever been to Sault Ste. Marie? Uh, no, I haven't. You have not? Fine no. little town. Well, not a little town. Fine northern Ontario town. They'll treat you well. Hey, ice yeah. conditions during your provincials. Uh, there was some grumbling uh, off and on during the event, but uh, I'm guessing you probably love them. Actually, yeah. Um, we heard some teams kind of complaining that it, it changed throughout the week and this and that, but for us, I think we caught onto the ice just fine. I Personally, I didn't have any problems with the ice. I thought the ice makers did a very good job, and the only difference that we did see... I think it was a little bit heavier in the semifinal game against King. But other than that, I didn't have any problems. We seemed to catch on. There were some quick spots and some slow spots, but we seemed to pick it up right away, and I think that's why we did have the advantage. Now, now three of you are from Edmonton, but uh, do you play with, uh, what, Leslie Rogers, I guess, in league play? Yeah, actually, we're spaced out across Alberta there. Um, Lindsay, our lead, lives in Lloyd. And I live in Vegreville. Megan's actually the only one that lives in Edmonton. And Whitney lives in Red Deer. And obviously, like, Lloydminster to Edmonton is about a three-hour trip. So asking or getting Lindsay to drive all that way when she has school and stuff that day and the following day is obviously a little bit far to make the trip. But so Leslie Rogers does play with us in the Super League. So where do you usually throw rocks in practice? At the Savile Center or, clo- or somewhere closer to home? Um, I throw as much as I can in Vegreville, but we get together as much as we can also in Edmonton. And, yeah, it's always at the Savile. Is it a, is it, do you think it's an advantage to be able to practice there? I think so. The ice conditions there are really good, and uh, it curls great, and it, you know, it's, it's very good ice there, and it's a great facility, and 
just great to play out of that club. And lots of good players around. And... Yeah, and all the teams, I think what prepared us most for Northerns is that most of the teams in Northerns and some in Provincials actually play in that Super League. So it really helped us prepare them by playing those teams throughout the season. All right, Valerie, I was devastated to hear that you weren't a regular listener of the curling show, but uh, maybe you <laughs> did hear a few interviews and know that we do the run back. I give you a topic and you give me your thoughts in one to three words. In one to three words. Okay, yeah, you, did, you did not listen to any interviews. This is very discouraging. I, I, I did, actually. <laughs> this afternoon I did listen to some. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, your team's surprisingly subdued reaction to victory. <laughs> uh, we were shocked. Yeah, it sounds like there was no whooping and no broom throwing, and uh, you guys were just too stunned, were you? Yeah, and and you know what? Really, I I knew that Clybrink would be a little upset at that game, and I just wanted to kind of shake their hands and be respectful and then do the celebration after that. Well, there's a classy gesture. Uh, that'll score you some points with fans in Sault Ste. Marie, I hope. That was uh, <laughs> nice thinking. Team Cheryl Bernard's quarterfinal loss to Eve Muirhead at the Bernie's Cup in Bern, Switzerland. Uh, I hope it was good practice for them going into the Olympics. I'm yeah, I wouldn't, do put, well there. I wouldn't put too much stock in that. Some people get fired up about these things, but uh, yeah. uh, I don't think it really matters. Um, the segment on curling on the Colbert Report. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a sense you're not consuming enough media, Valerie. Honestly, this whole media thing is totally new to me, and it, don't get me wrong, it's very exciting, but it's totally new. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you didn't catch the uh, Colbert Report at the Plainfield Curling Club uh, recently? No. 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 Okay, I figured that, but I thought I'd just check there. Uh, <laughs> what it would it be like if Caitlin Laws threw Skip Rocks for Kathy King? I think that's a really good team overall, and Caitlin and, and Kathy are very strong players. Uh, that's so diplomatic. I think they should switch it up. I think Caitlin should sh throw the brick, and I think they'd, do pretty, they'd, they'd be better. Uh, but anyways, uh, that's not for me to decide at all, is it? Um, okay. Amber Holland making her first Scotty's appearance. Um, I, I know Amber Holland, and I'm really excited to her, and really, really sorry, really excited for her, and excited to see her there. And I think after their good run at the trials, they they'll do well at the Scotties. Yes, yeah, Saskatchewan girl like you should be uh, happy for Amber Holland. She's been at it a long time, and finally getting there is nice to see. I think so. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. A prorogued parliament. So you weren't uh, answering no, questions no. like this just a few days ago, were you? No, I definitely wasn't. No thought on the Pirogue Parliament. <laughs> no <laughs> worries. Uh, country music. I love country. You do? Yeah. Does anybody in Alberta not like country music? I think it's rare to find someone who doesn't like country. Yeah, even John Morris, after moving to Alberta, has found a fondness for country music. And finally, the patch at the Tim Hortons Roar of the Rings in Edmonton. Did you make it to that? I definitely did, yeah. And it and was? It, it was a really good time. Actually, one of my friends split his head open on a pillar, so I had to take him to the hospital. It was that good. Now that's a good time. Yeah, made for a good story. Wow, how do you split it? There's a lot. Well, it was a big place, a lot of pillars, I guess. So, uh, yeah, I know. Piggyback gone wrong. We'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's hope you don't have any of those situations in Sault Ste. Marie. I don't think their patch will be quite as big, but uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's a great arena they have there, and they will do a terrific job. Hey, uh, at the end yeah. of the show, I give everybody a chance to name their sponsors. Valerie, who, uh, were there people who were supporting your team this year? Oh, definitely. We actually we have a, a lot of local support from Vegreville and also in the other towns that we live in as well. Um, we have online locators, e and Designs, Ride Car out of Red Deer. Um, in Vegreville, again, just tremendous support. There's Hair Fantasies, Helena Farms Limited, Big Glass and Mirror, Billick Financial, uh, USA and Woja Enterprises actually just sponsored us today. 
uh, Volton Electric, Charlie Sports helped us out. Just some tremendous support from this town, and I just we can't thank everyone enough. Wow, you just went door to door in Vegreville, didn't you? Um, no, I didn't go door to door. They just they are really excited to you know it's a small town, so they're really excited for our team, and they will just love helping out as much as they can. Well, good for your town and good for you. Uh, good luck in Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, I think anybody who comes out of Alberta uh, should do well at, at, at the event. There's a lot of more experienced teams, but it's great to see a new team come in. I think, uh, you know, for a lot of people, you're, you're going to keep the dream going. You see, you, you know, a team can come out of nowhere to win something, and that's exciting. Yeah, and I, and I really hope that it does promote the sport, and I just hope it sends a message out there, too, that, you know, they may say, well, the young and up-and-coming curlers, but I think with us and the young field at the Scotties and, you know, Gunlicks and making the trials, it just kind of shows that we're maybe not so up-and-coming that we're here and we're ready to play and we can do just as well as anyone else. Good points all, and uh, again, good luck and uh, take care. Thank you very much. That's Val Sweeting on the Curling Show. Take it from me, a 42-year-old front-end player, if you're going to have any chance against a 22-year-old like Val, you need to buy a copy of Fit to Curl at fittocurl.com and start hitting the gym. Or if you don't think it matters, just buy a copy because it's a good read. Thanks for listening. Here's Black Pudding. Get their music in the don't iTunes store. You know it's hard for me to see Things that I cannot find How can I tell if it's a dream Or just all in my mind